The most ordinary items in your life often come with the weirdest backstories. And today, I'll be telling you all about it. From the surprising medical history of BPA, to the shocking amount of calories in a gallon of gasoline, and even the controversial origins of the speculum, I'm about to dive into a list that'll make you see the ordinary in an entirely new light. Are you ready? Because I'm Mike with List25, and here are 25 bizarre facts about everyday items that'll blow your mind. 25. The color of your eggs. Did you know that you can actually tell what color eggs a chicken will lay just by looking at its earlobes? I know, it sounds crazy, right? But it's a real thing. Chickens with white earlobes usually lay white or light-colored eggs, while those with red earlobes are usually behind the brown eggs in the carton. Of course, nature loves to throw a few curveballs, so there's always a few exceptions to the rule. And just to keep us on our toes, different times of the day can result in slightly different shades of egg from the same chicken. 24. The Science of Cracker Holes Have you ever wondered why crackers have those tiny little holes? I mean, it's not just for decoration, they actually serve a purpose. Those tiny punctures are known as docking holes, and they're key when it comes to getting that perfect crunch. When the dough bakes, these holes keep the top and bottom layers connected, stopping big air pockets from forming that would otherwise turn your cracker into a puffed up pastry. So the more holes there are, the denser and crunchier the cracker gets. 23. Medieval beds were treasured in wills. Imagine a world where your bed is so important that it becomes a treasured item in your will. Back in medieval times, the size and splendor of your bed were a clear status symbol. It was common for the most lavish beds to be crafted from English oak or walnut and draped in silks or other luxurious fabrics, such that, even after death, they would continue to symbolize wealth and prestige. So your social position was basically determined by the size of your bed. Mine's a queen. For now, I eventually am going to look at getting a king. 22. Pig bladders shaped early American football. Did you know that in the early days of American football, the game was played with inflated pig bladders? Yep, hence the name pigskin that's still thrown around today. These round, bladder-filled footballs were great for kicking and running, but not so much for throwing. But hey, they made do. So the next time you hear the word pigskin in reference to football, remember how pigs played a binding role in the evolution of the game. 21. From menopause to plastics. Bisphenol A, or BPA, wasn't always the villain of the plastic world. Back in the 1930s, scientists discovered that BPA's chemical structure closely resembled estrogen, the hormone involved in menopause. And yeah, my nickname for a while. So it became a treatment option for menopausal women. As we all know, BPA's popularity eventually took a drastic turn. It became a key ingredient in plastics, turning up in everything from water bottles to food containers, and was soon linked to the development of cancers. Today, over 90% of us have BPA in our bodies, and new research is being funded to study the effects of BPA and certain health problems. Yes, I was called estrogen, even in, even in elementary school. I, fine, story time. You can leave this in if you want. Um, in second grade, Miss Murray's class, Gory Elementary, Tampa, Florida, I was called estrogen. And I'm like, they're like, oh, estrogen, estrogen, huh? And I'm like, I'm gonna prove you guys wrong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. So I went home, I looked up estrogen in the dictionary and I found it and it said estrogen, a derivative of estrogen. <laughs> I came back the next day and they're like, did you find that? And I went, nope. <laughs> so I lied. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason the medicine's called estrogen D. <sighs> 20, the evolution of the toothbrush. Here's a fascinating tidbit for you. Before nylon bristles took over, toothbrushes were made with animal hairs, specifically boar hair. It wasn't until 1938 that things took a turn for the modern when Dupont de Nemours introduced the first toothbrush with nylon bristles, famously called Dr. West's Miracle Toothbrush. His invention marked a huge leap forward in oral hygiene, and by the time World War II came around, everyone was brushing like a pro. Hey guys, just jumping in here real quick to tell you some exciting news. You know how you love watching our videos for amazing facts? Well, what if I told you that you could also have 500 amazing facts in the palm of your hand? That's right, we wrote a book. This one right here. What the facts are you talking about? And you can order it right now and have List25 right in your library or on your coffee table or wherever it is you keep your books. 
It's available right now on Amazon, so click the link in the description and grab yourself and friends and family a copy today. 19. Human birth control pills work on gorillas. That's right, the great apes handle birth control just fine since they're our closest relatives. However, it's not smooth sailing for every species. While birth control is a hit with gorillas, some big cats and canines can have a rough time with hormonal implants and have been found to have a tendency to develop uterine infections and even tumors. It's a perfect example of how interconnected and occasionally complicated our biological world can be. 18. The Origin of the Piggy Bank Most of us have fond childhood memories associated with piggy banks, but have you ever wondered where they came from? Piggy banks have been around since the 14th and 15th centuries and were used in both Western Europe and Java in Southeast Asia. However, the concept of money boxes goes back even further, all the way back to the 2nd century BCE. The original piggy banks were simply clay jars. The clay was an inexpensive orange colored material known as pig. Over time, the word pig evolved into pig and eventually a clever potter decided to shape these jars into actual pig shapes. And that's how we ended up with the delightful piggy banks we still use today. Although, I never want to break one. I feel terrible. I like the ones that you can just open and get everything out. 17. Air conditioning came from a New York printing press. The world changed for the better in 1902 thanks to an ingenious engineer named Willis Haviland Carrier. Carrier was working at a printing press in Brooklyn, New York, where high humidity was wreaking havoc on print quality. To tackle this, he devised a system that sent air through coils filled with cold water, cooling the air and removing moisture at the same time. His clever solution was the birth of modern air conditioning. By 1933, Carrier's invention had evolved into a complete air conditioning system that included a belt-driven condensing unit and mechanical controls, and became the gold standard in cooling systems in the world. 16. The first barcode was drawn in the sand on Miami Beach. Back in 1949, Joe Woodland wasn't just drawing doodles in the sand on Miami Beach, he was sketching out the very first barcode. Inspired by Morse code, he came up with a design of concentric circles made of thick and thin lines meant to be read from any angle. He got a patent for his idea in 1952, but technology took almost 20 years to catch up. With the rise of lasers and smaller computers, Woodland's vision finally became reality in the 60s. By 1972, Kroger was experimenting with barcode scanners using Woodland's original bullseye design. However, this was soon replaced by a more practical rectangular barcode, thanks to IBM's George Laurer. Despite some initial fears, I mean, people worried that barcodes were the mark of the beast or just a sneaky way for stores to rip them off, barcodes eventually became a staple of shopping by the 80s and transformed shopping forever. And now we have QR codes as well, that they still use barcodes on food and stuff. 15. A gallon of gasoline contains 31,000 calories. If you could convert a gallon of gasoline into food, it would equal about 31,000 calories. That's the equivalent to around 120 Big Macs or 103 slices of pepperoni pizza. Of course, I do not recommend swapping your Big Mac for fuel, but it's a wild reminder of just how energy dense gasoline is. 14. The first stroller was pulled by a goat. That's right. When baby carriages first hit the scene three centuries ago, they were a status symbol among the aristocracy. Designed by landscape architect William Kent for the Duke of Devonshire, these early strollers were more like fancy carts drawn by ponies, dogs, or even goats. Before these luxurious carriages, babies were carried in everything from slings to baskets, a practice dating back to ancient Egypt. It wasn't until the 19th century that the stroller became more practical, thanks to Benjamin Potter Crandall, who introduced the design that could actually be pushed. Initially a luxury item, the stroller gained widespread popularity after Queen Victoria purchased a few, making it a must-have for mothers everywhere. 13. The glossy secret behind your favorite candy. The secret is bug poo. I kid you not. That shiny finish on your favorite sweets comes from shellac made from the excretions of female lac beetles. These beetles live in the trees of India and Thailand, where they secrete shellac as a protective coating. The shellac is harvested, turned into dry flakes, and then dissolved in alcohol to create a liquid that's used for everything, from food glazes to wood finishes. So, I guess it is true that all that glitters is not gold. 12. Buttermilk is just 
churned butter's liquid byproduct. Have you ever wondered what buttermilk actually is? It's not some magic dairy potion. It's simply the leftover liquid after making butter. When you churn cream, the butterfat separates from the liquid. The resulting liquid, which we call buttermilk, is what's left behind. So every time you pour buttermilk into a recipe, you're basically using the liquid byproduct of butter making. 11. The T-shirt's No Fuss Origins The white T-shirt might seem like the ultimate wardrobe staple, but its journey started with military practicality and a dash of literary flair. The basic T-shirt evolved from a need for simpler, more practical clothing during the early 20th century. In the post-Spanish-American War era, Cooper Underwear Company advertised the Bachelor Shirt as a no-fuss, pull-over-the-head design that didn't need buttons. It didn't take long for the U.S. military to adopt the lightweight short-sleeve white cotton undervest for soldiers, especially in warmer climates, and civilians everywhere soon started to wear them too. The term t-shirt itself became popular only after F. Scott Fitzgerald coined the term in his book This Side of Paradise thanks to its T-shaped silhouette. So when you rock a t-shirt, you're not just making a fashion choice, you're wearing a bit of American history. 10. The Story of Pom-Poms on Hats Pom-poms aren't just cute things we put on winter hats. They have a very practical history, too. Back in the day, pom-poms were a budget-friendly choice. They were made from leftover yarn, making them a clever way to add a touch of flair without breaking the bank. But there's more to the story. It's actually believed that sailors were the first to wear them. According to legend, sailors would always bump their heads on the old ship's low ceilings and during rough seas. So to prevent injuries, a round cushion was added to the tops of their hats. Some even say that the red pom-poms of the French Navy came from a sailor who hit his head so hard it bled. So, that pom-pom on your hat actually started as a clever safety measure. 9. London's Stretcher Railings When World War II was on the horizon in the late 30s, the British government prepared for heavy air raids. As part of the preparations, the Air Raid Precautions, or ARP, department gathered up metal railings from homes across London and melted them down to create around 600,000 steel stretchers. These weren't just any stretchers. They were tough, easy to clean, and perfect for the grim realities of wartime London. By the end of the war, London was a mess, and the London County Council faced the challenge of what to do with all those leftover stretchers. They got creative and repurposed them into the black railings we see around some South London housing estates today in the process turning their wartime utility into a lasting piece of London's history. 8. The Unexpected Science Behind Your Scotch Tape Peeling sticky tape can actually create x-ray bursts strong enough to reveal the bones in your fingers, and you don't even have to expend a lot of energy. Peeling the tape at just 3 centimeters per second produces x-ray bursts with 15 kilo electron volt energy, packing over a million photons. It's possible because the tape's sticky side gets a positive charge while the roll takes on a negative charge. When electrons jump from the tape to the roll, they generate x-rays. While some dream of using this energy for x-ray photography or even nuclear fusion, the energy needed to peel the tape far exceeds what we could potentially gain from these x-rays, so don't expect it to power your home anytime soon. 7. From Greek Gods to Birthday Cakes one of the best parts about having a birthday is blowing out the birthday candles and making a wish, right? Okay, that and, you know, eating cake. In ancient Greece, people placed candles on their cake to honor the goddess Artemis. They believed that blowing out the candles would send their wishes directly to the gods and keep the evil spirits at bay. As the tradition moved to other parts of the world, people added their own twist to it. For example, the Germans made everyone believe that if you made a secret wish while blowing out the candles, that wish could possibly come true. Over time, the tradition reached countries all around the world, and so became one of the best parts of birthday parties everywhere. 6. Chocolate milk was initially used as medicine. Chocolate milk might be the ultimate comfort drink today, but it wasn't always a sweet treat. Believe it or not, it started out as medicine. An Irishman, Sir Hans Sloan, traveled to Jamaica in the 17th century. While there, the locals introduced him to cocoa, but he found it downright nauseous. Determined to make it drinkable, Sloan mixed the cocoa with milk, creating a much more palatable beverage. When he returned to England, he brought the recipe with him, where it was served as medicine for years. It only became the sweet milky treat we know and love today in 1875, when Swiss entrepreneur Daniel Peter created a dehydrated version. And the rest, as they say, is history. 5. The first vending machines were created to dispense holy water. The first vending machines were all about holiness. 
Back in the first century CE, a Greek engineer named Heron of Alexandria came up with the world's first vending machine. But instead of chips or candy, it dispensed holy water. The concept was surprisingly similar to what we have today. You drop a coin in the slot and voila! The weight of the coin would trigger a lever, releasing just enough holy water for your needs. It wasn't until centuries later that Heron's invention gained traction, first with tobacco, followed by stamps, and later, Tutti Frutti Chewing Gum. What's your favorite thing to grab out of a vending machine? Let me know in the comments below. Four, pillows used to be made of stone, ivory, and wood. Back in the day, comfort was a bit harder to come by, literally. The ancient Egyptians were the first to use pillows, but they weren't the plush, fluffy ones we know today. Instead, these early pillows were made from wood, ivory, or even stone. <laughs> Imagine trying to get a good night's sleep with your head resting on that. The Egyptians' pillows were more like decorative headrests, purely designed to keep their heads off the ground and away from any bugs. Three, the speculum's controversial beginnings. The speculum, a common tool in gynecology today, has a deeply troubling history. It all started in the mid-1800s in the American South, when a surgeon by the name of James Marion Sims began conducting experimental surgeries. But here's the horrific part. His subjects were mostly enslaved women, and these procedures were usually performed without anesthesia. Sims' goal was to treat vesicovaginal fistulas and gain a deeper understanding of the female reproductive system, but his methods were as cruel as they were pioneering. Two, the strange history of stick-on moles. Stick-on moles might seem pretty strange today, but in the 18th century, they were actually quite the fashion statement. Back then, a beauty mark wasn't something you'd want to get rid of. It was a symbol of elegance and flair. People didn't just show off the moles they had, they went a step further and bought stick-on versions made from silk, velvet, and even mouse skin to elevate their style. These beauty patches were carefully placed on the face to highlight features or set a certain vibe. It's a far cry from what we consider stylish now, but hey, trends change, right? Maybe it'll come back. Hashtag bring back stick-on moles. One. Love seats were originally designed to fit women's dresses, not couples. Back in the Victorian era, love seats weren't actually made for cozying up with your partner. They were designed for something far less romantic, fitting women's dresses. Yep, these seats were built to accommodate those massive billowing gowns that were all the rage back then. With hoops, petticoats, and layers galore, a woman needed space to sit down and smooth out her dress without getting it all bunched up. So, love seats weren't born as some romantic spot for couples, but as a practical solution for fashion. And well, that's a wrap. If today's list blew your mind, you'll definitely want to check out the one we did on 25 Bizarre Facts You Won't Believe Are Real. I mean, I covered everything from a Russian surgeon who removed his own appendix to the Fat Men's Club of New York and even the world's first two-headed dog, I kid you not. To dive into that madness, click on this link right here, and I'll catch you next time.